Now let's go to NBC News national political correspondent Steve Kornacki at the big board. Uh, Steve, uh, how did Donald Trump do it and where are some of the areas that he ought to be concerned with moving forward? I mean, he did it by winning Republican voters. That's that's the short answer. He won Republican voters by 50, five zero points over Nikki Haley. Um, what went wrong for Haley in terms of not getting this within single digits or really getting in position to have a shot to win is two things. First of all, in the population centers of the state, we saw this in Iowa. That's where the voters that she tends to appeal to are disproportionately voters with higher incomes, places with higher concentrations of college degrees, more moderate voters, that sort of thing. Yeah, Nashua, New Hampshire, the second largest city in the state, right across the uh, Massachusetts border, is a perfect example. This was supposed to be in Haley's world. This was supposed to be Haley country, has exactly the kind of voters I'm talking about, and yet she didn't even win Nashua. This is a place she needed to win by about 10 points. And the other problem that Nikki Haley had is, and we saw this in Iowa, when you get away from population centers and you get to areas that are small individually but big collectively and that really are becoming the backbone of the Republican Party, especially since Donald Trump came on the scene nearly a decade ago now, we're talking about small towns, we're talking about rural areas, we're talking about places with lower median incomes, places Places with lower college attainment. Nikki Haley did absolutely nothing in Iowa with places like that. There were a quarter of the counties in the state where she got single digits, and that trend absolutely continued in New Hampshire and showed no signs of changing. A good example, again, we'll go to the Massachusetts border, but a little town, New Ipswich here, you know, Fitchburg, Mass, for point of reference, a little bit south of here. Look at this, 51-point win for uh, Trump over Haley here. Again, this is like an Iowa-like uh, uh, performance for her in a county that is similar to what she's trying struggled in in Iowa. So it, it all adds up to Trump winning this thing by double digits. And I think if we just go to the exit poll here, I think it really puts it in stark relief. Again, this was an electorate. You are not going to find another state like this. District of Columbia is the only thing I can even think of where the electorate is going to resemble something like this. 50-50, essentially, Republican and non-Republican. And look at among Republicans, 25 percent for Nikki Haley. You're not winning primaries if you're getting 25 percent of the Republican vote. You're not going to come close to the Republican nomination if you're getting 25 percent of the Republican vote. Where Haley was able to do better and keep this thing you know, to the low uh, double digits, independent voters made up more than 40 percent of the electorate. She did win them by 22 points. That's a big margin. That's a good margin for her. But put this in some context. That is not that is not by far the best margin we've seen among independents in the New Hampshire Republican uh, uh, primary. The biggest margin was 42 points. This is 22. The biggest margin was 42. That was John McCain in 2000. And John McCain then went to South Carolina, as this race will now go to South Carolina. And in South Carolina, George W. Bush was able to say, hey, John McCain is winning this thing or is, in, is competitive on the backs of non-Republicans. And he was able to turn that Republican electorate in South Carolina heavily toward him, toward Bush. Uh, I, Trump certainly saw him last night. Among all of the things he said, he seemed to be setting up a very similar dynamic. And he's got a stronger argument to the core Republican base than Bush or really any other Republican I think of had, because this is a 73 point, this is more than a 70 point swing from Trump winning by 49 among Republicans to Nikki Haley winning by 22 among independents. That's a 71 point swing. That is by far the biggest swing between winners of those two groups that we've ever seen in a New Hampshire uh, Republican primary. And so simply, if you just look ahead at what's coming on this calendar, I can pull it up on the screen right here. Uh, you know, you have Nevada. The rules are you know, Haley's in a primary with no delegates. Trump's in the caucus that has the delegates. So Trump's going to get all those delegates out of, uh, out of uh, Nevada. There are four in the Virgin Islands. It's a wild card. There's a possibility Haley could do well there. It's four delegates. You go to South Carolina, just mention all the issues. It's her home state, but the issues based on those demographics that Haley's going to have in South Carolina are profound. And the key here is once we're out of this, uh, uh, these initial states, the rules change. And in many of these states, the rules have been changed at the behest of the Trump campaign, which has a strong influence over the state Republican parties. They've not been changed in South Carolina. They've always been this way. You win a congressional district by a single vote, you get every single delegate in the district. You win the statewide vote by one point, you win the entire state's delegation, a, a delegate a pool. So Trump got about a third of the vote in South Carolina in 2016. He swept all 50 delegates. He absolutely could do the same uh, based on what we're seeing right now. You go to Michigan, it's split into two parts right here. You notice there's two different days. There's 16 delegates, there's 39 delegates. These are going to be given out proportionally. So Haley could get a chunk of these 16, but these 39 
could they're essentially winner take all because if there's two person race right now and in most of these states that are going to vote Super Tuesday, the rule is basically if you get 50 percent plus one, you get all the congressional district delegates. If you get 50 percent plus one, you get all the statewide delegates. And in a two person race, hmm. it just means win. You know, if Trump's getting 51 and Haley's getting 49, he will take all in a district or he will take all uh, it, it statewide. And you just look, you know, Michigan, you know, go down to, to, to a March 5th. It's a 50 percent rule in Alabama, in Arkansas, California statewide, 50 percent plus one yeah. closed primary. You, you win. Trump's at 66 percent in the latest poll in California. You get all 169 there. You know, now North Carolina is proportional. She could have Haley could have an opportunity there. Texas, 50 percent. You win the district, all the votes, 50 percent. You win the statewide, all the votes. This is, you know, Haley could do well in Vermont, I could see. But this is just a recipe looming on the 5th of March for what the Republican process is designed to do to get a nominee early. Yeah. Wow. All Thanks. right, Steve Karnacki. Thank you so much, Steve. Wow. Greatly appreciate it. it